shot me five times, leaving 10 bullet holes through my body. I died for 
30 minutes. But during my time of death, let me, let me just back up a little bit. You know, I remember when I first got shot. The first bullet hit my, my uh, left leg area. Then two more bullets hit the same leg. And I ran and I fell down beside my, my, my Jeep, my car. And I said, I, can't, I could not believe that that had happened to me. You know, sometimes when the devil comes in like a rush of blood, and we wonder why things happen, that's the most critical time that you begin to worship. You know, I found myself laying down in, in my pool of my blood worshiping God, despite of what had happened to me. Never shot anybody, never been in a game, never done those things. But the devil didn't like my praise, because see, I was, I was working on my third hour of gospel, and I was just giving God everything that I had, so the devil decided to take me out. Just like you, I'm sure some of you in here have been doing the right things, you've been trying to do the right things, and doing everything that you know to do that's right, yet still it looked like Nothing good is happening. It looked like some, everything is being stagnated and stopped. And why me? And all these things. But see, that's the most important time in your life that you must learn to just worship and praise God. Anyhow. Hallelujah. Because see, when you begin to praise God and worship Him, you'll find yourself getting over that storm, over that mountain, over that situation. And right there, where you are right now, He look at you and your purpose. Yeah. He, look at you, he look at you beyond what you're going through, down your lower bar. I ain't got nothing, I don't have anything, I'm going through, this is the saddest place I've ever been in my life. He still look at you in your purpose of what he called you to be. Amen. And just, you know, just think about a testimony. A testimony is a test for a moment. Yes, yes you're going through this for a moment, but when you come out of that thing, Amen. God is going to use you like never before. Amen. Can you imagine Amen. what he's going to do for you? Amen. I mean, and you're going to be able to pass that mantle, pass that, that knowledge on to somebody else to get them through their testimony. Yes. Amen. 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 Give God one. Just give God a hand for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a rainy day. There were so many obstacles in the way today. But the devil is a liar, man. I know Jesus. Because God's word still will prevail no matter what. Because, see, he already knew that this day was going to happen. He had it all planned out already. He knew that the sound problem was going to happen. He knew all of that. He said, but yet, will you trust me? Will you trust me in the midst of your situations and circumstances? Will you trust me? Yes, I trust you, Lord. Amen. How many of you trust the Lord today? Amen. Right before I give the word, we're going to have a song. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, I want you guys to be going to sing that right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want you guys to focus in on something that you want to thank God for this morning. Thank you, Lord. Something that you didn't think that he was going to work out for you, but he did. Thank you. A situation that he brought you out of.
Father. Father, I submit right now to your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord God, that I may decrease, that your Holy Spirit may increase in me, O oh God. And I pray, God, that as I open my mouth, O oh God, that you will fill it. And I pray, Lord, that the flesh will glory in your presence today, O oh Jesus. Thank you, but your word will accomplish what you said to do. To do. Repeat after me, God. God. I submit. I submit myself. Myself to you. To you. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. God. God. Open. Open. My ears. My ears. So that I, so that I may, hear may hear from you. From you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. God. God. Open. Open. My heart. My heart. So that I. May receive, may receive from you, from you today. today. God, God, help me, help me not, to not to be the same, be the same as, I came in. as I came in. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we glorify you and we pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Like I said, there was many obstacles in the way today. You know, and I, and I just kept pressing through. And, you know, God allows things to happen for whatever reason that he allows them to happen. But he says that whatever the enemy has meant for evil, that he will turn it around and that he will get the glory in it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Just in the midst of it, we don't recognize what's going on. So sometimes we, we get discouraged or we fret because we can't see the end result. But... God, is, he sees the end result. He knows the end result. He provided the end result. He created the end result. So in the midst of our situations, we need to just trust him. Hallelujah. The title of today's message is called The Woman at the Well. All right. How many of you know the story about the, the Samaritan woman? Yes, yes. I'm going to give you a little brief about the Samaritan woman and Jesus at the well. If you turn to John chapter 4. How many of you are thirsty in here today? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You know, you might be thirsty. I'm or hungry and thirsty. You're hungry and thirsty. <laughs> well, we got some bread water. and some living water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. This woman was thirsty. Like some of us. We thirst for a lot of things. Right. We thirst for love. We, thir we thirst for, for um, understanding and acceptance. Mm -hmm. we, some of us thirst for drugs and alcohol and sex. Da 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 da. But this woman was thirsty one day. I'm going to give you a story about this little boy. He, he was about to go to bed and he asked his daddy. He was like, Daddy. Can, you, can I have some water before I go to bed? Daddy said, no, go to bed. You missed your opportunity. You should have drank the water a long time ago. It's too late. So five minutes later, he was like, Daddy, can I have some water? He said, son, I told you no. You missed your opportunity. Five minutes later, the son asked him again. He said, Daddy, can I have some water? He said, boy, if you ask me that again, I'm going to spank you. So... Five minutes later, <laughs> the little boy says, Daddy, right after you spank me, can you bring me some water? <laughs> yeah. We're all thirsty for something. We're all looking for something. We're thirsting for things. We, we thirst for somebody else's possessions. We thirst for, for all kinds of things. Because we think that those things that we're thirsting for are going to fill us. Uh-huh. Good. We long to feel love. We long for experience of happiness and joy. We desperately search for meaning and significance. You guys know the Sprite? The Sprite can? Yeah. Their, their logo is Obey Your Thirst, right? right? Yeah. That's they have their little commercials and it says Obey right. Your Thirst. Right. Image is nothing and thirst is everything. Just Obey Your Thirst. So it's leaving you with the sound that that, that, that Sprite, the little bubbly stuff with the little lemon juice in it can, can satisfy your thirst. We're presented with so many images as to say why, how, what can fill us, what can satisfy us. Right, right. And that's the enemy that using di different things to, to block us from seeing the true glory of God. 
Many people obey their thirst. They drink up whatever they drink up. They drink whatever is around them. They pursue it. The result is even greater thirst than they had before. Jesus teaches us about thirst and how to truly quench our thirst. And he tells us through this experience of a Samaritan woman. Turn with me to John 4, please. Starting at the fifth verse. Eventually, Jesus came to Samaritan, a village near Sychar, near the parcel ground that Jacob gave his son Joseph, uh -huh. a place called Jacob's Well. Yeah. And Jesus, Jesus was tired from his long walk, uh -huh. and he sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some more food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I, are, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? And Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift of God that, has for, that God has for you, who I am, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. Mm -hmm. But sir, she says, how can you give me this water? The well is, what, about nine feet deep? I don't know, something like that. You don't have a bucket. How you gonna get the water out? What, what kind of water are you talking about? And besides that, are you greater than the ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and the cattle that we enjoy? How dare you, Jesus? <laughs> Tell me that you could give me some water, that you are far greater than the man who created this well. That's how sometimes when Jesus presents some things to us and Jesus speaks to us, he says, don't worry about it, I got it all worked out. You say, no, 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 Jesus, I don't see how you can do that. There are certain situations and circumstances where our natural eye, we can understand how it's going to be worked out. Right. So we question Jesus. Right. Jesus didn't need, he didn't need a, 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 a Ralph's grocery store when he fed the 5,000. He didn't need a, a, a scuba board or a ski board or whatever you call them things when you're riding on the waves. He didn't need one of those. He didn't, need, he didn't need anything when he parted the Red Sea. He didn't, need, he didn't need a spaceship when he ascended up into heaven. How we are idiots to question Jesus about what he's doing. Because he says that he has it already worked out anyway. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean that it's not so. Because that's what faith is to me. Faith is believing in those things that I do not see. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. I can't see it, but it doesn't mean that it's not there. He didn't need the wineries when he turned the water into wine. He didn't have to go to the people in the wineries and say, you know what, I'm going to do this little miracle here, so I need y'all to, uh, you know, just act like. He didn't need all of that because he's God. Amen. And he can do anything with Buffalo. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Jesus replied, people soon become thirsty again after drinking this water, but the water that I give takes away thirst altogether. It becomes a perpetual spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me some of that water so that I don't have to be thirsty again. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water. And Jesus told her, I'll give it to you, but go and tell your husband and come back. Yeah. She said, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, you're right, you don't. You no. have had five husbands. Ooh, la, la. <laughs> and the one you're living with right now is not even your husband. All right. Let's paint a picture. See, the, the time that this woman was at the well was not the time that people usually go to the well. But because of her indiscretion, she was probably trying to hide out like some of us do. We try to hide behind our sins. But Jesus is sitting right there and he sees it all. He sees it all. And at some point in our lives, he's going to point it out to you. He's going to point it out to you and he's going to do it in love. 
See, Jesus could have said he didn't even have to talk to her. You know, at first she was like, uh, who are you offering me this water? And then she said, she called him sir. And then later on she said, you must be a prophet. Because she started recognizing who Jesus was. Uh -huh. And it, it's not until we realize who Jesus is that we can start recognizing the work that he can do. And then how we can just rest and, and trust him in every situation and circumstances. And we ain't got to do it ourselves. We ain't got to try to work it out no more because Jesus already worked it out. He already got it worked out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The woman said again, please, sir, give me this water. And so what happened was Jesus acknowledged her sin but gave her an opportunity to repent. So she went back telling everybody all about what Jesus had done. You know, the disciples, when they came back, they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you sitting here talking to her? You know you're not supposed to be talking to her. But God is God. He can do anything he want to do. And whenever God does something, he has a purpose to why he's doing it. And he allowed that situation just for us today. Many, many, many years ago, this situation happened. But Jesus allowed it so that we can, we can identify with it today. Some of us are that woman at the well that are searching and thirsting for something. That's looking out for something that's always needing to obey your thirst. You're trying to feel a need. You're trying to fill a void in the emptiness inside of you that can only be filled by God. And until we realize that, we're going to be on this vicious cycle, trying over and over, trying to fulfill this thing inside of us. Until we realize that God is the only one that can feel. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't hold back when he told her about her sin, and he didn't apologize for it. The woman at the well was looking for something as yeah, she went through her five marriages. I mean, that's something right there to show you that she was thirsty for something. Five marriages, she was thirsty for love. She was looking for love in oh, all the wrong God. places. <laughs> and looking for love in all the wrong places. What's love? You gotta do this. She was thirsty, not but for water. And Jesus supplied that thirst. You know what? Have you ever had your thirst quenched? Have you ever been on a hot day? It's like, oh my God, I need some water. <laughs> I'm so thirsty, I need some water. And then you get you a little cool glass of water, and you drink that water down, and you be like, ah, that was what I needed. Mm -hmm. Jesus provides that an ever-ending flow. His, his, his faucet don't stop. The faucet, that the, the water that Jesus provides, it doesn't stop. It's an, an, an eternal thing. Jesus said that he's come to give us eternal life. Hallelujah. And we have that eternity through him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. John 7, 37 and 38 says, On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, If you are thirsty, come to me. If you believe in me, come and drink. Jesus promises a life that is overflowing, an abundant life for all those who obey and trust him. If you're going to truly satisfy your thirst, you have to choose to drink from the faucet and not from the drain. Uh-oh. I know God gave me that last night, right? <laughs> drink from the faucet and not from the drain. Very good. You know, a faucet is, you know, flowing, right? Mm. But a drain, it catches all the goop and the stuff. Yeah. And then it has a little bit of water dropping out of it. And so a lot of us, get our, we get our source from the drain. Instead of getting it from the source, hallelujah. Amen. We need to trust in the source. We don't need to take no back roads. We don't need to go because, you know, you feel like, oh, my life is a mess. I've always been a mess. You know what I mean? Like the pigs that, that slop, that, 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 that eat slop. If you try to clean a pig, you're just going to go back into the slop. Right. Because that's his nature. Mm -hmm. So because of our nature, we want to go back to, those, to the slop. But God says that he's cleansed us. Yeah. He's delivered us. He's set us free. He's given us. He said that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation and all things are passed away and behold all things are becoming new. So we don't have to go back to that slop again. We don't have to drink from the drain. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you know the best? You get from the cesspool of life 
can regurgitate on you, and many people settle for it. Or you can choose to satisfy your thirst by doing what God says. His will will satisfy you for good. Though it might be painful, hard, and unpopular, it will satisfy you. It will become a constant flowing faucet that does not run dry. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. Excellent. John 4 10 says that Jesus offers living water. Living water symbolizes eternal life through the, the intercession of the Holy Spirit. Living water is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2 8 and 9 says that it is by grace that we have been saved. And grace is a gift from God. John 4, 11 through 12 says that Jesus is the source of our living water. How many of you are like the woman at the well? You're thirsty. You've been trying so hard to get filled. You've been trying. You tried drugs and alcohol. You tried sex. You tried, you tried money. You tried shopping. You tried gambling. You tried all kinds of things to fulfill you. And you want to say today, God, I'm like that woman at the well. I want to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to receive that living water. I want to receive that gift of God, that eternal life through Jesus Christ. If that's you today, the Spirit of the Lord is here for you. God is here for you to deliver you, to set you free, and to fill you. You no longer have to be on this road. Chasing a dream. But you can have the blood of Jesus. You can have the life that God gives us. You can have deliverance. You can have peace. You can have peace beyond that which you could ever imagine. You can have the love of God that's been shed abroad in our hearts. You can have it all today because God is here for you. But if you want to turn over that, that thing that has held you back. That thing that you've been thinking that has filled your thirst. That thing that you thought that is going to fill your need but hasn't. Because insanity to me is doing the same things over and over, expecting different results. If you want some new results today, you can turn that thing over to God today. Today. And you no longer have to hold possession of it. Because some things have possession. It holds you in bondage. And it keeps you. And it blocks you from the sunlight of the Spirit. If you want to experience God's forgiveness, like Pastor Tony said today, some things are held where are, are, are still attached to us because we're holding on to unforgiveness. If there's some people that you need to forgive, if there's some situations that you need to let go, because see, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to rob, he comes to block, he comes to destroy families, he comes to destroy relationships. The devil is alive right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. So you can turn that thing over to God. Yes, Lord. And you can forgive. You can let it go no matter what they've done. Just like the woman at the well. No matter what she did, Jesus didn't. Look down on her. He didn't talk about her. He didn't make fun of her. That's right. He says, I'm here. The source of living water. The source that you seek. I am here. Jesus is the source that you seek today. If you never received the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, and if you would like to do that today, the altar is here for you. The altar is here for you. If you've already given your life over to God and you want to say, God, I want to uh, rededicate my life to the Lord. I'm, I'm like that woman at the well. And I'm thirsting. I'm thirsting for righteousness. I want something new. I want to I wanna hold on to something new in my life. If that is you, Pastor Moore and Pastor Tony is here to pray with you. You know what? Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Because you know what? When you enter into heaven and you get before God, or wherever you go, it's going to be you and him. It ain't going to be you and everybody else in this room. So God is speaking and tugging at your heart right now. 
If he's tugging at your heart, then that's you that's supposed to come up here today. But if you just want to sit there in your seat, hallelujah, the spirit of God is here to deliver and set free. If there's something you need healing in your body and there's something you want to be, you need healing in your family and your relationships, the altar is here for you today. Thank you, Jesus. Stand with me, if you would, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Give me a clean Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come humbly before your throne of grace, oh God, and we, we thank you that your spirit is here, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we ask right now that you will create Father, 
Help us to trust you. Father, we trust you. Tell the Lord, I trust you, Lord. Say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. The Lord is just telling me there's some people here that's, that have not, that have been holding on to unbelief, that have, because of situations that are happening in your life, you have not been able to trust the Lord. But he wants you to speak it out right now and just tell him that you trust him. Tell him that you trust him no matter what. Tell him that you trust him. Father, we trust you no matter what. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you for who you are and all that you are. We worship you in holiness, in true holiness. And we thank you. Father, we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As you go through this week, just, just, you know, focus in on the Word. Amen. Spend some time in the Word. Yes. Spend some time in worshiping God. Yes. Spend some time giving Him some thanks and some praise. No matter what the situation looks like, praise Him anyhow. Amen. Praise Him anyhow. Praise Him before the, the, don't just praise Him when things are going good. Praise Him anyhow. Praise Him when it's going bad. Amen. That's you know, right. hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are the Smith, hallelujah. Hallelujah.